top of the morning to you, or afternoon, or whenever you're watching this. I uh, just woke up, so I have some pretty severe bedhead, and I'm a little groggy, and these lights are making my eyes water, they're so bright right now. But I had an idea, uh, as I opened my eyes laying in bed, I said, what am I going to make a video of today? And, well... I just so happened to be browsing through this big beautiful binder I had made uh, a couple years ago or a year ago or something because I was running on postage stamps believe it or not uh, for mailing my own letters um, um, I was using them on grab bags and stuff and uh, instead of buying more stamps I decided to just use some that I already have that are in my albums just they're recent, they're not really so rare. I can go right on USPS and buy them again right now. And So, um, anyways, I bought a lot of stamps early on from USPS. And um, I ended up uh, looking through this binder that has a lot of recent stuff. And I bought a bunch of folios. And some pretty cool sheets that have good information about different things. Uh, space, wildlife, what have it. So those popped into my head this morning and I figured why not take a better look at some of these folios I'm not even gonna kid you <laughs> I haven't even read some of them I bought them I looked at them and I put them in the binder so kinda silly and um, I wanna take a better look at them and I'm gonna read them which is um, something I usually don't do I'm actually gonna we're gonna read through them so I don't know how long this video will be but we're going to take a look at these folios. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling them out now and let's see what's in here and which ones I'm going to end up showing you. So I came up with some stuff out of this binder and I'm completely missing the folios. What the heck? They were in a different binder. I checked two binders the other day. So I came up with uh, a good bit of stuff here. I think it'd be fun to run through these um, Celebrate the Century sheets. You, you know, some of you guys may have seen these already. This is a whole series, um, but uh, I'm not even going to kid you. I, ha I haven't read that, sat down and read all of them, so I want to check those out. I also have Wild and Scenic Rivers, STEM Education, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and I guess that's it. So, some fun stuff to look at in this binder. And um, one thing before I move on too quick, I just want to mention something I saw again that I totally love are these... Um, you guys have probably seen these before. Yikes. Oh, there you go. Leather postcards. I love these. Um, apparently, these sell pretty well. I don't want to actually sell these. I want to keep these. But if you guys have never seen these, these leather postcards are actual strips of leather. And um, so they're thick, soft, supple, and uh, real postcards that were postally used uh, back in the early 1900s, was it probably the 20s or something? What's this? 1906. That's actually earlier than I expected. But, um, yeah, these are awesome. Real leather postcards. Um, I don't know if you can mail something like this today. Probably. But, anyways. Um, these always are some of my favorite things in this binder. Uh, one of them is uh, these leather postcards. They're just super duper cool. I love these things. So, anyways, moving on. Let me find the folios, which I think are in a different binder. All right, so it must be in this binder that I had them. I've literally named this Random Covers and Stamps. There we go. It's a totally wrong binder. Whoops. So, this will be into the deep is our first folio here. And I don't know how many actual folios I have, but I knew I had, like, at least a couple of them. Uh, so, let me continue searching through this, see if I can find them. Oh, 
Okay, so I found a few that I want to check out. This is just actually a sheet, Cloudscapes. They have a short little blurb on the back about them. I always thought this is one of the more beautiful um, stamp sheets. Um, TED Talk Stamps actually did a viewer top 10 favorite where he featured me once, and um, this was one of the stamps that I said was one of my favorites. I just love this series. It's so beautiful. We, I found an innovation sheet. I did find some more folios. Total Eclipse of the Sun. Uh, that one's awesome. Into the Deep. And so, the other stuff I had found as well. So let's run through these one at a time. And um, seeing as how the whole Celebrate the Century one I think is going to be the longest, I'll do that last and we'll get through all the other stuff first. Get through all these other sheets and folios first. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, so we'll start with this Wild and Scenic Rivers sheet. Now, this sheet um, is kind of part of a two-piece series. It's got this informational card, and this is considered an American commemorative panel. So I'm going to read this uh, paragraph here with this nice card, and while you guys can see the actual stamps that this is discussing. So it says, Wild and Scenic Rivers. The special streams of the National Wild and Scenic Rivers system are those deemed outstandingly remarkable in terms of scenic, recreational, geological, fish, and wildlife, historic, cultural, or other values. In the words of the 1968 Wild and Scenic Rivers Act, these rivers or segments are allowed to remain in their free-flowing state and natural setting without man-made alterations. Some 200 river segments, 13,000 miles of approximately 3 million U.S. river miles are included in the wild and scenic river system. Outdoor recreation has become more and more popular over the last half century, and Americans value clean rivers for swimming, fishing, and boating, and healthy riparian environments for camping, hunting, hiking, and climbing. America's growth and success have always relied on our wealth of rivers. We have lined them with factories, roads, and cities, engineered them for shipping, dammed them for flood control and hydropower, tapped them for irrigation, and relied on them for waste removal. Through the wild and scenic river system, we strive for balance. Special streams and the land surrounding them are reserved as sanctuaries where clean waters support habitats for native life, native wildlife, including iconic species like bears, wolves, moose, eagles, trout, and salmon. Art director Derry Noyes designed the pane using existing photographs by Michael Melford, in parentheses, stamp and salvage image of the Merced River and the Owyhee Koyukuk Neobara, Neobara and the Tlacakilla <laughs> River stands. I butchered that one. Uh, Tim Palmer did Snake, Flathead, Skagit, and Ontonagon River stamps. Bob Wick, staff photographer for the Bureau of Land Management, did Missouri, Deutsches, and Clarion River stamps. So, um, yeah, this is nice that we have, you know, this system set up to keep all of these beautiful rivers protected. Um, it's just a nice thing. So this is a nice little sheet here. Anyways, let's move on to the next. Alrighty, next up, STEM Education Commemorative Panel. So it has a nice vertical strip of four of these die-cut STEM in, um, stamps. First one is Science, then Technology, Engineering, and then Math, which is, of course, what STEM stands for. It says, in an increasingly competitive world, proficiency in the fields collectively known as STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, is more critical than ever. Featuring art by Dave Plunkert, these stamps celebrate the role of STEM education in keeping our nation a global leader in innovation, 
while recognizing the importance of STEM in providing new opportunities for all Americans to learn and explore the world. Concerned about government studies that project a lack of qualified citizens to fill STEM jobs in the years ahead, a coalition of federal agencies, private businesses, nonprofit organizations, and educators has called for improving and expanding education in STEM fields. Citizens proficient in STEM make valuable contributions to society in areas as diverse as commerce, health care, the environment, and national security. But proponents of wider access to STEM education also point out the direct benefits to individuals. STEM fosters valuable problem-solving and critical thinking skills that apply to everyday life, even for someone who does not study a STEM field in college or never pursues a STEM career, whether making healthcare decisions, interpreting facts and figures, or making informed choices as both a consumer and as a voter. Beyond its professional benefits, STEM provides us with a set of tools not only for understanding how the world works, but also for engaging with it and changing it. That's a nice little sheet there. This is from 2018, and I paid $11 for this. So this is a very attainable sheet, and I'm pretty sure this is still available, uh, this and the last, at uh, USPS. I just bought this directly from their website. So this is a nice sheet. Now let's move on to the next. All right, this next one is the Tyrannosaurus Rex American Commemorative Panel. I actually really like this one. I've always liked the T-Rex. Who doesn't? I mean, come on. It's a magnificent creature from our past. Um, this is one of my more favorited stamp releases in recent memory. Uh, these are very beautiful stamps, and um, they're holographic, which is pretty awesome. These are from 2019. I don't think you're going to be able to really see the holographic um, action going on here, but they're a very beautiful stamp series, and I love this uh, love this specific panel. So anyways, let's read what they have to say here. It says, the U.S. Postal Service digs deep into the fossil record to reveal Tyrannosaurus rex at various stages of growth and in both fossilized and fleshed out forms. A surge in T-Rex discoveries over the last few decades has filled in many vivid details regarding the awe-inspiring dinosaur species. Based on the growing body of research, scientist and paleo artist Julius T. Sestoni, I probably butchered that, created photorealistic illustrations for the stamps. The downy covering on the T Rex hatchling reflects discoveries of other predatory dinosaurs and their bird descendants. The likeliness is based on rare fossils of juvenile Tyrannosaurus and of an infant Tarbosaurus, a close relative. The young adult T-Rex, shown approaching through a forest clearing, reflects recent discoveries of skin impressions that suggest that an adult T-Rex had bare skin. The third design shows the fossil of a young T-Rex posed approaching a juvenile Triceratops. The fourth depiction shows a juvenile T-Rex chasing a mammal Although an adult T-Rex probably walked no faster than 12 miles per hour, according to recent computer modeling, a youthful T-Rex could probably run quite fast. The young adult seen on two of the stamps was discovered in Montana in 1988. Excavation revealed what would become one of the most studied and important Tyrannosaurs yet, including the first T-Rex arms ever recovered. Really? The specimen was on government land, so it is owned by the nation. Beginning in 2019, the nation's T-Rex resides in the Smithsonian's Institution's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. 
holy crapola, um, I didn't realize that. That's I could go drive and see that. Wow. So that's really cool. Um, huh. I, I quite like the sheet. I like the stamps. I love uh, how we keep finding out more about the T-Rex. I do believe these are all one-sided, and they are. Well, let's move on to the next thing. Next up, Cloudscapes. Now, I have always liked this one. I just think this is a very beautiful um, series. All of these different cloud formations. Look at those. Absolutely gorgeous. Definitely have not seen all of these in real life. I will say, have seen this one that looks like ribs. Um, that one's always an odd one to see in the sky. I'm like, wow, look at that. What the heck? And um, So, um, anyways, I had uh, sent in a viewer top 10 to, let's see, TED Talk Stamps at some point. And he actually featured me on one of his episodes. And um, this is one of the stamps that I had sent in as a one of my top 10 favorites. I really like this series. It's from 2003. Oh, and... Um, there is some info on the back, which uh, I may as well read, uh, but um, I'm going to show you the front of the stamps in real time. Clouds develop when moist air cools to its dew point by rising into a higher altitude or by moving over a cooler surface. Water vapor in the air then condenses in liquid or frozen form around minute particles such as pollen or dust. The shapes and altitudes of clouds, as well as the sequences in which they develop, help people forecast the weather. In the early 19th century, Englishman Luke Howard, chemist by trade and meteorologist by avocation, created a system for classifying clouds using Latin names. He described the three most common shapes as cirrus, which means curl of hair, stratus, which means layer, and cumulus, which means heap. He also defined four compound cloud forms that derive from the three primary shapes, including nimbus, which is rain, Later, scientists added terms such as humulus, which means small, and incus, which means anvil, to designate other cloud properties. The International Cloud Atlas, Atlas, first published in 1896, is based on this classification system. Nine of the ten basic cloud genera are pictured here on this stamp pane and arranged according to altitude. Oh, I didn't know that. The prefixes Ciro and Alto distinguish high and middle altitude clouds, respectively. Nimbostratus, a dark, featureless cloud marked by falling rain or snow, is not shown. Well, yeah, so this is, um, that's cool. So I didn't know that they were, or what did it say? It said, Oriented by, um, arranged according to altitude. Yeah, I never knew that. See, I haven't even clearly read the, enough of these, uh, these sheets here to really know everything about them. And, um, so arranged by altitude. Wow. How about that? Cool. Well, I love this sheet. Well, let's move on to the next thing. Next up is Into the Deep, Stamps Under the Sea. So, clearly, 1895 from the USPS. This is just a little backer that came with it. It does have some info. And um, I was just reading this, and it said, Mount the stamps in the sheet. Duh! Why haven't I done that yet? I have this nice little envelope here with mounts and stamps. And I'm actually somewhat, a little bit, just a little bit ashamed that... I haven't done this yet. Why, why not? Um, this is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do this um, real fast here before I actually get into reading it. And uh, this is what it looks like before I have the stamps in there. Uh, it does have the images so you can see where they go. I love the fact that they're mounted and not hinged so I don't damage any of the stamps. And... Um, this is just a big old fold-out folio here. 
I think it will look better with the stamp. So let me go ahead and put them in there like I should have done <laughs> a long time ago. And uh, so let's see what it looks like afterwards. Alrighty, so I got it all made up. That didn't take too long. And I understand how the folio works now after bothering to put all the stamps in there. And um, so let's get into this thing, into the deep. So when you open it up, the page that shows next to the stamps is the information. So, um, Aquarium Fish says, Zoom in on this continuous fanciful scene from a tank featuring some of the life you might find populating reefs around the world, as well as three pieces of equipment commonly found in aquariums. A protein skimmer, a thermometer, and power head and heater. At the bottom of each sheet of 20 stamps, the selvage includes common names of the 23 creatures depicted. Which would you like to add to your home aquarium? Don't try placing all of these into the same tank, as some can be quite aggressive. So they give you some fish facts. So this is a 1999 issuance. I do see that on the stamp. Includes environmentally friendly characteristics printed on paper stock with 20% post-consumer waste and recyclable adhesive. The stamps incorporate phosphorescent tagging which can be seen under short wave light. A large reproduction of the stamps was unveiled underwater at the Long Beach Aquarium of the Pacific. <laughs> Held by divers inside a 350,000 gallon tank. How about that? What? A large reproduction? Wow. Freshwater tanks are easier to maintain, and their fish are generally less expensive. But saltwater fish often are striking, if not bizarre, in appearance. Some of the creatures included are inexpensive and can be easy to maintain in a saltwater aquarium. Others can be expensive due to high demand, such as the flame hawkfish at the bottom left of the top left stamp. I guess that one. The long-spined sea urchin in the top right stamp has sharp spines that can puncture both coral and human hands. As a scuba diver myself, I will tell you that um, yes, sea urchins have some serious spines you do not want to play around with them. Next, Wonders of the Sea. Panel 2 says, Why not dive underwater to celebrate fish stamps? For the 1994 Wonders of the Sea first day ceremony, people boarded two submarines and traveled to a shipwreck 80 feet below the surface near Hawaii's Waikiki Beach. In this issuance, varieties of fish from various parts of the world are brought together in a celebration of color. With both hobby divers, hobby divers, <laughs> and those doing scientific research. And two of the stamps add some of the life that's visible above the ocean surface. That would likely be these ones with the little boater and then a ship. This is facts. The art director for these stamps was himself a diver and surfer. Because his plan was to also include divers, he insisted that the artist be someone who could realistically paint humans as well as fish. Raccoon butterfly fish appear in both of the bottom stamps and grow about nine inches long. The long-nosed butterfly fish, with its bright yellow and black, grows to be about nine inches. Here at upper left, it's shown adjacent to the porcupine fish, which actually can grow to almost three feet. Really, I didn't know the porcupine fish gets that big. So this must be the long-nosed butterfly fish right there. One dolphin is breaking the surface next to several banner fish. Hmm, I guess that one. Which do share the same sea, but only grow to about nine inches long. On each stamp, the date of issuance can be found with the aid of a magnifying glass. 
check out the oxygen tanks in three of the stamps. You know? For the lower right stamp, look closely at the SCATI. The black and white striped fish next to the diver. Huh. There's our SCATI. The bottom right stamp is full of creatures. Perhaps most striking of which is the bright orange anemone, Demoiselle, also known as the clown anemone fish. Anemone fish, yeah. <laughs> Clownfish. But it only grows to about four inches long, smaller than all others in the stamp frame. Okay, so. Creatures of the Sea, panel three. In 1990, a special joint issue between the United States and the former Soviet Union produced Creatures of the Sea stamps. The stamps were highly publicized and first day ceremonies were held in Baltimore, Maryland, and Moscow. The mammals depicted are those that live in both American and Russian waters. To further the partnership between the two nations, an American artist and a Russian artist collaborated in illustrating the stamps, which feature killer whales, northern sea lions, a common dolphin, and a sea otter. Creatures of the Sea Facts. The sea otters are the largest member of the weasel family and rarely come ashore? What? Otters are members of the weasel family? My god. Sea otters are notable in their use of tools as they are often seen using rocks to smash abalone. That's true. The common dolphin is very social and their herds communicate with each other as they hunt for food and pursue prey. Killer whales, also known as orcas, are capable of sophisticated maneuvers when hunting. That I can definitely attest to. I don't know if you guys have ever seen their hunting tactics on YouTube videos, but holy moly, it is scary how smart killer whales are. In captivity, killer whales are known to be highly intelligent and easily trained. A northern sea lion male with his bellowing bass voice, bass voice, can weigh more than a ton. Jeez, more than a ton. That's a big boy. Okay, so, um, panel four, sharks. Although sharks can sometimes inspire more fear than wonder, the 2017 Sharks Forever stamps aim to show the beauty and power of these fascinating fish. The realistically illustrated stamps feature five shark species that swim through American coastal and open ocean waters. The mako shark, the thresher shark, the whale shark, the great white shark, and the hammerhead shark. In recent years, growing research has led to conservation efforts and a deeper understanding of these mysterious creatures. Facts. It says shark skeletons are composed of light, flexible cartilage instead of bone. Sharks are ancient creatures, having emerged twice as long ago as the first dinosaurs. Sharks can detect tiny movements in the water from far off, allowing them to follow the motion of possible prey. Mako sharks are believed to be the fastest swimming sharks. Capable of swimming in bursts that can reach 22 miles per hour. How about that? Hey. Thresher sharks cooperate with one another to ambush suspecting unsuspecting prey. And great white sharks are the only sharks <coughs> that spy hop, uh, peeking above the water's surface to survey their surroundings. Well, I didn't know that. <clears throat> so great whites actually peek above the surface. Oh. So here's all the different sharks. It's like the hammerhead. I actually like all of these, actually. Uh, but the hammerhead and the great white are probably my favorites. So anyways, this is an awesome folio. And um, it's fun. That's actually the very first folio <laughs> I have ever filled out. 
So um, this was uh, fun, and they they kind of gear this towards children, and I can absolutely understand why. I mean, it's interactive, it's educational. These are cool. Um, you know, if, if or when I ever have children, uh, being the nerdy stamp collector that I am, I'll certainly be trying to get them into this kind of stuff. I see no reason why not to. So that was fun. That's a cool booklet. Neat information, fun stamps. I like the stamps and um, feels nice too. So I'm very pleased with that booklet. Let's move on to the next. Next up, the total eclipse of the sun. So um, this is a folio, if I'm not mistaken. A nice fold out piece here. What do we have here? It says, Total Eclipse of the Sun. This colorful, inventive folio commemorates an extraordinary event occurring August 21st, 2017. For the first time in almost four decades, a total eclipse of the sun will be visible from the U.S. mainland, sweeping across the width of the country and casting a 70-mile shadow path. The interior of this folded folio displays a map of the eclipse's journey, a creative illustration of how an eclipse works, and a total eclipse of the sun's stamp. In addition to displaying the map of the eclipse's journey, the folio includes a translucent slip case so you can recreate in your hands the phases of an eclipse. Huh. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I remember when that happened, and uh, it was definitely a cool event. Uh, everybody had their sunglasses, and uh, you're not supposed to look directly at it or something. Okay, so... Mm, a little protective sleeve here. Is this... Nope, so that stays in there. Okay, so that's all protection. Wow, this thing is... Uh, boy, I really have not taken a good look at this thing before. So it's a long folio. As a total solar eclipse occurs, the phases of the moon make the eclipse visible to us on Earth. So the... Sh <laughs> uh... I am. This is. Uh, I'm struggling to interpret <laughs> what all of this means here. But, uh, anyways. Uh, is there anything on the back? And there is. Okay. First contact. As the eclipse begins begins first contact is when the moon appears to touch the sun partial phase the partial phase indicates when the moon appears to block part of the sun's disk total eclipse the moon's umbral shadow covers earth and blocks the sun also known as totality so that's a total eclipse another partial phase as totality wanes, another partial phase appears. Fourth contact, the eclipse concludes when the partial phase ends. So yeah, this is a big long folio here. Um, showing the whole spread. Huh. Okay, <laughs> well... So, so you guys can see well, we'll just kind of move, move side to side here. On August 21st, 2017, millions of Americans will be able to catch a rare glimpse of a total eclipse of the sun. That's our stamp. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the stamp that is heat sensitive. So, uh, holding my thumb over here for a sec may, I'm not sure... Uh, through this mount create a uh, change in the black eclipsed 
image and it does you can see the moon a little better so I have an entire press sheet of this this is an awesome stamp very beautiful it says in anticipation of this spectacular event the US Postal Service released the total eclipse of the Sun stamps which celebrate the eclipse with special heat activated technology the total eclipse of the Sun stamps were printed with thermochromic ink which means that when you press on the back of the circle of the stamp with your finger an image of the moon will gradually be revealed. The image on the stamp is based on a photograph taken by an astrophysicist of the total solar eclipse that was seen over Jalu, Libya on March 29, 2006. <coughs> it says, a total eclipse can be seen when the sun, moon, and earth are positioned in a straight line the moon blocks the visible sun from view, casting a shadow on our planet. The last total solar eclipse seen on the U.S. mainland occurred in 1979, but was only visible in the northwestern part of the country. The eclipse in August will sweep across the entire country. First time this has happened since 1918. Those lucky enough to see a total solar eclipse are in for a stunning display in the sky for about 15 minutes before totality. Suspense builds as the western sky darkens. Then at totality, the sun will appear to be a black disk and the light on Earth will resemble twilight. Venus, Mercury, and some stars can be seen during the few minutes of totality. People witnessing the eclipse may also experience a brief and dramatic drop in temperature and a strange silence <laughs> as the hushed birds and animals are fooled into thinking night has fallen. A total eclipse is our sole chance to see the sun's corona, its outer atmosphere, without special tools. As the moon blocks the glare of the sun, the corona becomes visible and some say it looks like a flower's petals reaching out into space. Many have made plans to chase the eclipse, and those fortunate enough to see it will create a spectacular memories of this singular celestial phenomenon. <laughs> Here's the path of totality. Hmm. The eclipse will create a 70 mile shadow path also known as the path of totality this shadow will cross America diagonally appearing first in Oregon mid-morning local time and then taking about an hour and a half until it exits off the coast of South Carolina mid-afternoon local time although all of the United States and Canada will be able to see a partial eclipse on August 21st 2017 only those who are in the narrow path of totality will see the complete phase of the eclipse. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, so I definitely remember when that happened. That was an awesome thing. It was definitely an eerie feeling when <laughs> the eclipse took place. It was like, ugh, totally got dark. Um, I don't know if I remember birds and bugs and stuff, whatever, getting silent or not, but... Um, that was a unique event for sure. I was at work when that happened. So, anyways, everybody was really anticipating that, and it was pretty neat, I have to say. So, I guess we won't be seeing that for quite some time. Anyways, this is a neat folio, even though this is commemorating events that have passed already. Um, I think that um, it's a neat little thing to pick up, and uh, I like it. Yeah, pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Um, kind of struggle to understand that whole diagram there on the back, but whatever. Uh, I like this folio. This is cool. I love the stamp, um, specifically. That's definitely one of my more favorite stamps. I think it's awesome. I love the whole thermochromic um, technology used on that stamp. It just makes for a unique stamp. So anyways, on to the next one. So we have here another commemorative panel about innovation. These are gorgeous stamps that seem, well, they're reflective, and um, I don't, uh, 
I don't think they're holographic or anything. Actually, they may. I think they are holographic. Um, I, as I look at this right now, I am thinking to myself that I have not paid this series enough attention. Um, these are very beautiful stamps. It looks like they're commemorating different innov innovation. Uh, see, biomedicine is this. Genome sequencing is that. Robotics, solar technology, and computing. That's cool. Um, yeah, I really have not. It's funny that I own this, and I, I really have not given enough time to really inspect these. Uh, these are beautiful stamps. Uh, I definitely like these. So let's read what they have to say about this. The American spirit of innovation has touched lives around the world not least in the fields of computing, biomedicine, genome sequencing, robotics, and solar technology. It is a testament to our optimism. Combine an invention with practical uses for that invention, and the result is innovation. In this collaborative process, American scientists and engineers work with and build upon the work of their counterparts around the country and the world. A stunning example of innovation in computing is the microchip, whose invention in the United States in the late 1950s made possible the digital revolution and the proliferation of small electronic devices marketed everywhere today. Another important area in which American scientists have contributed significantly is vaccine research with the result that this country and many others have been able to combat terrible diseases that once cut short or damaged millions of lives. Among the results of advances in genome sequencing is an amazing technology known as CRISPR. Largely developed by U.S. scientists, CRISPR can alter DNA in cells to correct mutations or other malfunctions that cause diseases such as sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, and certain cancers. Innovations in robotics are solving tough issues and improving lives in many ways. For example, it is no longer science fiction to have a prosthetic limb that not only moves like a biological one, but also responds to neural commands with the flexibility and speed of an intact limb. And scientists and engineers continue to make advancements that reduce the cost and increase the reliability of solar cells to ensure that solar's role in powering America grows. Art director Antonio Alcala designed the stamps using existing photographs. Well, this is an awesome sheet. I love the bubbles. Those are very cool. I like those. Love the stamps. I like the whole part about um, combine invention with practical use, and that is innovation. That was a very well put um, description of innovation. So I love this panel, awesome stamps, very, very beautiful stamps. Um, they're pretty, and um, yeah, I'm just glad that I took the time to actually pay a little bit of homage to these commemorative panels. These are great. Alrighty, so next we're going to move on to the Celebrate the Century series. Alrighty, first up, the 1900s. The dawn of the 20th century. It says, 60% of Americans lived on farms or in small towns. Immigrants were arriving on an average of 100 an hour. Railroads dominated land travel but 1900 saw the first U.S. auto show, and 1908, the first family transcontinental car trip. Huh. In 1908, Henry Ford made automobiles more affordable with the Model T. The Wright brothers stunned the world with their first airplane flight in 1903, and the game of baseball grew up. President Theodore Roosevelt protected 148 million acres as national forests. The first daily comic strip, Mutt and Jeff, appeared in the San Francisco Chronicle. 
the Ashcan School brought realism back to the art world. Hmm. Muckrakers exposed corruption. Ida Tarbell attacked monopoly in the oil industry, and Upton Sinclair revealed shocking conditions in the meat industry. <laughs> wow. In 1909, the newly formed NAACP promoted equal rights for African Americans. New words. I guess there's new words that were made. Cheerleader, filmmaker, phony, and psychoanalysis. Huh. So here they have the uh, different stamps. These are pretty, these are, these are neat sheets. I like the history involved with these. Some of these I've purchased, some of these I've come into possession of. And on the back here, um, it gives you a description of the stamps. Now I'm not going to read all of these descriptions, but um, you guys can always pick these up. They're not too bad. This one, 1998, right? 1675. And this is the first in the series. So let's scoot right on to the next one, which will be 1910s. Well, here we have an interesting looking sheet. Let me change my battery real quick and we'll do this one. The 1910s. America looks beyond its borders. Halley's Comet lit up the sky to begin the decade. American workers began moving from farms to factories. The Ford Motor Company refined the automobile assembly line. Traffic lights and white lane dividers became part of the American landscape. Scientific and technological achievements changed society. In 1911, in New York, fingerprint evidence alone was used for the first time in the United States to arrest a burglar. <laughs> Jim Thorpe was an international sports star, but Tarzan was an even more popular hero. Huh. The accidental sinking of the luxury liner Titanic shocked the nation, but it was in the sinking of another ship the Lusitania that upset society, leading to U.S. involvement in World War I. Two million American soldiers fought in Europe, and more than 116,500 lost their lives. Americans saw the light as the decade ended. Daylight savings time was instituted in 1918. New words, I guess. <laughs> Camouflage, electronics, and troublemaker. Huh, well, these are cool. Beautiful stamps. Definitely neat stuff. I like the Grand Canyon. And, as usual, they have the information on the stamps on the back. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one here. This will be the, th the 20s. So, just so you guys know, all of these are 16.75 is what I paid. And um, so, definitely attainable. It's a nice series. <laughs> okay, so the 20s, the roaring 20s. Two constitutional amendments went into effect in 1920, turning the nation upside down. The 18th Amendment prohibited the manufacture and sale of alcoholic beverages. And the 19th gave women the right to vote. Prohibition backfired, leading to a widespread disrespect for the law. A federal highway system was organized and the number of automobiles nearly tripled. 
Spreading electrification spawned the golden age of radio. The Roaring Twenties, as the decade as the decade became came to be known, was an age of thrill seekers and heroes. In 1926, Gertrude Adderall swam, swam the English Channel faster than any man ever had. The following year, Charles Lindbergh flew non-stop across the Atlantic alone, and Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs. The first feature-length film with talking parts, The Jazz Singer, appeared in 1927, and the first Academy Awards were presented in 1929. The prosperous times ended with the stock market crash of Thursday, October 24th, 1929. Some new words were motel, robot, fan mail, and teenage. Huh, these are, I do like these, these are cool. And no, believe it or not, I have not actually sat down and read these. <laughs> so, as usual, our information on the back. In case anybody wants to pause and read anything about the stamps. On to the 30s. We're making our way pretty quickly here. So. Depression, Dust Bowl, and a New Deal. By 1933, the average wage was 60% less than in 1929 and unemployment had skyrocketed to 25%. Dust storms forced many farmers to give up their land. Huh. Americans escaped harsh realities by playing Monopoly, reading the adventures of Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, and listening to Hoagie Carmichael's Stardust. Popular films included King Kong, and it happened one night. For the first time, African-American athletes became national idols. Joe Lewis in boxing and Jesse Owens in track and field. Prohibition was repealed in 1933. President Franklin Roosevelt fought the Great Depression with his New Deal programs. The Star Spangled Banner was chosen as the national anthem. The Empire State Building rose above the Manhattan skyline, and the Golden Gate Bridge spanned the San Francisco Bay. Back on the ground, the parking meter made its first appearance in 1935. Huh. As the decade closed, many Americans were anxious about the growing war in Europe. New words were all-star, oops, pizza, and racism. <laughs> wow. Yo, I, 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 just, I find this stuff surprising. The word racism wasn't around until the 30s? What? Wow. Or oops. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Holy crap. Anyways, um, awesome stamps. Gone with the Wind. That's a wonderful book. Uh, and then we have our information on the back. Okay, cool. On to the 40s. So. The 1940s. World War II transforms America. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941... The United States entered World War II. More than 16 million American men and women served in the military, while millions of housewives worked to help keep the economy running. The U.S. emerged from the war as the world's most powerful nation. Americans, after surviving years of depression and war, eagerly started families. A surge in the 1946 birth rate began the post-war baby boom. Movie fans enjoyed the films of Bing Crosby and Betty 
Grabby. Grabby? Commercial television was launched, and Milton Burl and Ed Sullivan became household names. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball. For the first time, people played with slinkies and silly putty. Nylon stockings were the rage for women, while teenagers sported socks with loafers or saddle shoes and rolled up blue jeans. The jitterbug was popularized, popularized by music from live bands and jukeboxes. New words were hot rod, pinup, bikini, and self-employed. Huh. Take a look at these stamps a little bit closer. Love that one. Antibiotic saves lives. That's neat. There's Uncle Sam, World War II, I like that. We can do it. Rolling up her sleeves. The slinky. <laughs> They're dancing to the jitterbug. <laughs> oh man. This is a good one. I like the 40s. Oh, it appears I have two of them. I was like, what's this? So, uh, some info on the back. Awesome. Okay, on to. You guessed it, the 50s. Okay, well this one is, in, it doesn't, I must have come across this one, so it doesn't have, it's not in this protective case anymore. I'm going to leave it in this uh, page protector here. So, the 50s. It says, family fun, suburbia, and nuclear threats. The 1950s were, for the most part, years of peace and prosperity. Millions of families moved to the suburbs. Americans liked Dwight D. Eisenhower, their kindly war hero president. Television became popular. I Love Lucy and Gunsmoke were hits. Teenagers chose their own fashions and music. Elvis Presley thrilled young people and shocked their elders. <laughs> the decade also had a serious side. The Korean War took more than 50,000 American lives. The first hydrogen bomb was detonated. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court declared racial segregation in public schools unconstitutional. And in 1955, in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks refused to give up her bus seat to a white man. But in 1957, President Eisenhower had to use the Arkansas National Guard and paratroopers to enforce integration at a Little Rock High School. In January 1959, Alaska was admitted as the 49th state and in August, Hawaii became the 50th state. New words were brainwashing, ballpoint, high-rise, and centerfold. Huh. Here we have some neato stamps. Look at that guy, I love the rocket. Look at everybody. Desegregating <laughs> the cat in the hat, Rocky Marciano there, huh? And then some info about the stamps on the back. Cool. Okay, on to the sixties here. So The rebellious 60s and man on the moon. Okay. A decade of extremes. 
the 1960s saw triumphs and demonstra demonstrations. President John F. Kennedy's commitment to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade was fulfilled. Young people questioned authority and rebelled against the status quo. Civil rights activists won a victory when Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. One of their most influential leaders, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was assassinated in 1968. To promote international friendship, President Kennedy established the Peace Corps in 1961. His assassination in 1963 stunned the nation. In 1965, U.S. ground troops were deployed to active combat in Vietnam. Roger Maris hit 61 homers in one season, and the Green Bay Packers won the first two Super Bowls. The Beatles captivated the nation, and Star Trek debuted. New words were hippie, workaholic, scam, and skateboard. <laughs> 1960, huh? The hippies came about. Cool stamps. I like that one. I like the peace symbol, I like the man on the footprint on the moon, nice car, Vietnam War. These are awesome. Okay, so here's some info on the back. Okay, on to the 70s. Well, this one I'll take out. So, Bicentennial, Watergate, and Earth Day. In the 1970s, the U.S. celebrated its 200-year history and made a commitment to protect the environment. The 26th Amendment lowered the voting age to 18 for all elections. Gender-based discrimination was prohibited, and a woman's right to have an abortion was defined. As a result of the Watergate scandal, Richard Nixon became the first U.S. president to resign from office. Jumbo jets doubled airplane passenger capacity, and the first national speed limit, 55, was instituted to conserve energy during an oil embargo. Fiber optics advanced communication technology and international direct dial telephone became a reality. Ultrasound, CAT scans, and MRIs revolutionized medical imaging. Sesame Street educated children Monday Night Football entertained sports fans, and All in the Family introduced its audience to a new kind of TV series. Viewers taped TV shows with VCRs, and some Americans caught disco fever. New words were junk food, slam dunk, and miniseries. Huh. Well, here's our stamps. There's Big Bird. <laughs> cool satellite. I like the um, the brain imaging there. Earth Day. These are cool. Okay, so here's the information on the back.
And on to the 80s next. Alrighty, the 1980s. Space Shuttle launched Berlin Wall Falls. The Space Shuttle Columbia, the first reusable spacecraft, was originally launched April 12, 1981. Sandra Day O'Connor became the first female justice on the U.S. Supreme Court. And Sally Ride became the first American woman in space. The Iran-Contra hearings made headlines. Several events signaled the easing of international tensions. In December 1987, President Ronald Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev signed a nuclear arms reduction treaty. The fall of the Berlin Wall in November 1989 presaged the end of the Cold War. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial was dedicated November 13, 1982. A new national holiday, Martin Luther King Day, was first celebrated in January 1986. The growth of the cable television, video games, and compact discs had a major impact on home entertainment. Dallas and The Cosby Show topped TV ratings. Hip-hop culture and music videos gained popularity. New words were yuppie, infomercial, and biodiversity. <laughs> cool. Here's some of the stamps. E.T. Yeah, kids playing video games. Hostages came home. Huh. The fall of the Berlin Wall. That's funny. We actually have a piece of the Berlin Wall at uh, work that's been encased in some kind of clear composite stuff um, to protect it. <laughs> Lots of people have pieces of the Berlin Wall actually. So here's our information on the back. Alright. The 1990s. In final decade, Cold War ends, economy booms. The Soviet Union collapsed effectively ending the Cold War, troops were deployed by the United States in the Persian Gulf, in Somalia, and in the Balkans. In 1992, often called the Year of the Woman, a record number of women were elected to political office. American astronauts joined Russian cosmonauts on the Mir space station, and Mars Pathfinder and Mars Global Surveyor sent back extraordinary images of the red planet. A grouping of planets resembled our solar system was found by astronomers. The World Wide Web and email revolutionized communications. Millions of Americans bought cellular phones as service expanded. In Washington, D.C., the Holocaust Museum grew, uh, drew huge crowds, while in Los Angeles, the, Getty's, the Getty Center's architecture got rave reviews. Moviegoers flocked to see Titanic and Jurassic Park. Extreme sports such as snowboarding and BMX biking attracted young people and the U.S. women's softball, soccer, and basketball teams proved themselves the best in the world. New words were e-commerce, website, and Y2K. <laughs> Alright, let's zoom in on these. <laughs> so there's our Jurassic Park stamp. I like that. I like the eagle. Recovering species. Titanic, man, that was such a big freaking hit. Um, she could have moved over on that board a little bit for him, but that's just everybody's opinion. Uh, so, uh, I like these stamps. These are nice. 
Seinfeld. <laughs> the, the older I've gotten, the more I like Seinfeld. I didn't care for it at all as a kid, but um, I have no problem watching Seinfeld now. I think it's hilarious. Okay, and there's our information. So, that does it, guys. Holy moly. That was a long run. A lot of different stamps to look at. And I found all of that quite interesting. Um, I actually haven't bothered to, um, to read all of those, which I probably should have if I had any sense, right? At some point... I probably should have already read all those things because I bothered to buy them. I paid the money for them. Well, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed uh, going through all that stuff with me. That was fun to look at. I actually... Um, these are most of my commemorative panels, probably. And... Um, there may be other stuff like this that I have to look at. If uh, you guys like this kind of video, I can do another one later on. And um, I quite like those folios. Um, kind of makes me want to get more of them, but not anytime soon. I'm trying to save money if I can help it. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. That was some cool history. And uh, I would like to do another video like this at some point, just for fun. Take care. I'll see you all next time.